qualifying for the Italian Grand Prix is over and Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari has taken pole position to the delight of the Tafosi at the circuit. But what did we learn from qualifying? Well, I'm going to be doing a data analysis from qualifying, so let's get into the video. As usual, I'm going to be talking about McLaren, Ferrari, Aston Martin, Mercedes and Red Bull later on, so stick around for that. Qualifying today saw the return of the alternate allocation, which meant that Q1 was done on hard tyres, Q2 was done on medium tyres, and finally Q3 was done on the soft compound of tyres. Because of this, we saw a variation in lap times by over 2 seconds, which was down to a mixture of circuit evolution, and also because of tyre changes, with them going onto softer compounds, and therefore going faster with each session. To show this off, I've brought up all of the fast times from Carlos Sainz in qualifying, and you can see how he was able to improve from his first lap in Q1 compared to the final run at the end of Q3. Let's now compare the first lap from Q1 to the final lap from Q3 to see what we can learn. When we look at these two traces, we can learn a lot about how the changes in tyre compounds affect the level of grip for the drivers. On the exit of the second Lesmo, you can see that Sainz was able to get onto power sooner and much more aggressive on the softer tyre when compared to being on the hard tyres. And also through the Ascari chicane, you can see he can carry a lot more speed on the softer compound of tyres as the soft has much more grip, which allows Sainz to be much more committed. Also going into the Parabolica corner, you can see that Sainz just has more grip and therefore can corner at a higher speed and for the drivers this is the dream scenario. This is why drivers typically love qualifying on the softest tyre because they get one run with maximum grip and minimal fuel and you can see visually how much faster and how much more committed the drivers can be as they attack the corners. As I just said, the time difference here was just over 2 seconds. Qualifying for the Italian Grand Prix almost always requires a car to have great straight line speed efficiency and also have a lot of horsepower. So with that in mind, what teams are struggling today? Well, the obvious answer was Alpine. I mentioned in my practice data analysis how Alpine were the slowest car in a straight line as they just don't have the horsepower of their rivals with the Renault power unit struggling with power. And in qualifying today, we saw that a lot as both Pierre Gasly and Esteban Ocon were eliminated in the first part of qualifying. So let's compare the times of Ocon to Bottas in the Alfa Romeo. Even here, you can see how the Alpine team were struggling with straight line performance as Ocon cannot match the Alfa Romeo and that is despite the fact that Alfa Romeo isn't always massively fast in a straight line. But even so, Bottas has the edge down every straight and the Alpine is only really faster in the corners, but it's not by enough for it to take any effect to the end result. The race for Alpine is going to be very difficult, and I will be surprised if either driver even gets close to the points. One team, though, that had a brilliant session, at least for one of the drivers, was Williams, as once again going into this weekend, I anticipated that Alex Albon was going to have a strong weekend as the low downforce Williams car was going to enjoy the Monza circuit. And, well, Albon is going to be lining up 6th place on the grid. He definitely does look comfortable at this circuit with low downforce. So, let's take a look at his lap and compare it to the McLaren of Oscar Piastri, since he was the fastest McLaren driver today, and let's see what we can learn. As we can see here, McLaren actually has a decent downforce advantage, and you can see that as Piastri is simply faster on the exit of every single corner. It also shows that the McLaren probably has better mechanical grip when compared to the Williams. However, the low drag of the Williams comes into its own and they power past the McLaren as each straight continues on. Remember, both of these teams are powered by the Mercedes power unit, but yet Albon has a 10 km per hour advantage over Piastri in the McLaren, once again going to show how good the Williams car is with its drag reduction. In the race, Williams will be difficult to overtake, so points should be very possible, provided that Albon gets off the line well and doesn't make any mistakes on the first couple of laps of the Grand Prix, and he does manage to keep his nose clean, which is very difficult in the mid-pack. I just want to say that if you are enjoying this video, I'd greatly appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now though, let's get back to the video and let's talk about the top 5 teams and let's start with McLaren. 
For McLaren for tomorrow's race, it was a bit of a mixed bag session. Piastri is starting the race in 7th place, but Lando is down in 9th place, and both McLaren drivers were beaten by one Mercedes driver and one of the Williams drivers. Going into the weekend, I was not really sure how McLaren would get on, simply because we never got to see them with a lower downforce package at Spa, and it seems that low downforce is still not a strong point for them as a team. Let's now look at the lap time of Piastri and compare it to the Ferrari on pole position, to see how Piastri ended up being half a second down compared to Sainz. Sainz in the Ferrari was much faster in a straight line, which of course is all important, but we already knew McLaren was down in this department from what we just saw with the Williams, but it was not just that. Sainz was later onto the brakes than Piastri at a lot of the braking zones, but yet was still able to carry the same amount of speed into the corners that Piastri was able to, and this is really where Piastri lost out in the end versus Sainz. He just was too early on the brakes as opposed to Sainz, which could just be that the McLaren was not as well balanced as the Ferrari. Going into the race, McLaren likely will have a good car, but they have not been the kindest on the tyres recently, and I am a little bit concerned that the softer tyres could work against them, as they don't have a pure pace advantage, unlike Ferrari. For Ferrari, today was an incredible day as Carlos Sainz lines up on pole position and Charles Leclerc is in P3 and was less than 0.1 seconds off of Carlos as Ferrari did an incredible job and impressed in front of their home fans. So with that in mind, let's take a look at their laps to see where Leclerc just lost out on pole position. Leclerc was actually up coming out of the first chicane against Carlos Sainz and early on things were looking pretty good. However, at the Della Roggia chicane, Leclerc just could not match Sainz through there, which is something that we also saw in practice, and well, from there the damage was done. Despite the fact Leclerc was much faster through the Parabolica, he could not do anything about the advantage that Sainz had built up. Tomorrow, the race against Red Bull will be very difficult, and I do expect Max will still win the race, but I do think we should at least see one of the Ferrari drivers on the podium, as they do have the pace, it is just a little bit of a question as to how they can manage the tyres during the Grand Prix. For Aston Martin, today went kind of how I expected. Alonso was the slowest driver in Q3, but that being said, I didn't really expect Lance Stroll to be the slowest driver overall, being even slower than the Alpine drivers. But how did Fernando end up being so far off the pace when it came to Q3? Because we're not really going to talk about Lance Stroll. Well, one thing that was surprising when you look at these lap times is Alonso actually has decent pace in a straight line and they were not the slowest car out there, but the grip for Fernando was just not there. You can see that on the brakes, he has to slow down a lot more than Sainz pretty much at every single braking point and all of these stopping points is what cost the Aston Martin driver. Potentially, if Aston Martin went lower on downforce, then there is a chance they are running possibly too little downforce, which could be to compensate for a slightly lower top speed than they otherwise would have. In the race tomorrow, it will be interesting to see what Fernando could do, and I do think he could have a good fight with the McLarens and the Mercedes, but it was always going to be one of the trickier circuits on the calendar for them as a team, and they will likely be looking forward to the next race at Singapore, which should be where they find themselves back at the sharper end of the field. For Mercedes, qualifying today was a bit of a struggle, especially for Lewis Hamilton, as he almost didn't make it out of both Q1 and Q2, but he will be lining up in 8th place on the grid, and George Russell will be starting the race in a fairly respectable 4th place. It looks like Hamilton's Mercedes was struggling with riding the kerbs, and generally it looks like he was maybe running a little bit too stiff of a suspension setup. Because of this stiffness, you can see that he has to slow down more than Russell in order to ride his car over the kerbs. And tomorrow in the race, we could really see Hamilton struggle. Russell, however, could have a much better race and he could find himself with a much needed top five result. And I do think it is possible for him. And finally for Red Bull, Max Verstappen missed out on pole position by the most slender of margins versus Carlos Sainz but he was at least able to beat Charles Leclerc. For this comparison, I have brought up the delta time between Sainz and Max Verstappen, and as you can see through the middle section of the lap, that is where Sainz was faster than Max, but 
Had the finish line been a few metres further down, then it would have been Verstappen who was on pole position, as he got an excellent run out of the Parabolica, and if he doesn't lead out of Turn 1 in order to fly past the Ferrari, he will need a strong exit from Parabolica during the Grand Prix. Even though Verstappen's not on pole position, I don't think he's going to be very disappointed about that. So, with that in mind then, who are my top five going to be in the race? Well, for P5, I'm going to take a bit of a gamble and say Alex Albon in the Williams will finish in fifth place. P4 will be Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari. P3 will be Sergio Perez. P2 will be Carlos Sainz. And yes, I do think Max Verstappen will win the Italian Grand Prix. But that is what I think. The question is though, what do you guys think will happen? In the comment section down below, let me know. And as always, comment, leave a like and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.